Welcome back to our reading of the New Testament in 2024. We're about 10% of the way through our journey. We've read 16 chapters of Mark's Gospel and we've added to that in the past couple of weeks nine chapters from the Acts of the Apostles. One of the things that has really struck me in rereading these passages is just how courageous were these early followers of Jesus. If you go back to the very end of Mark's Gospel, in those closing chapters, we have painted for us a picture of Jesus' crucifixion and resurrection. The bravery that the women showed in particular, being at the foot of the cross of a criminal, was quite remarkable. And then taking their faith in their hands once more on the Sunday morning, very early, going to the tomb. At any point they could have been arrested. And in the same way we find in the Acts of the Apostles that his followers were preaching and teaching. They were healing in the public square. They were sharing everything they had with one another. Some of them were even put in jail because of it. They were opposed by the religious authorities of the day, the Sanhedrin, the Sadducees, the high priest. They were told not to speak in the name of Jesus. And yet, they completely ignored that. As Peter said in the Acts of the Apostles, who would you have us obey, God or a human being? It was a no-brainer for them. They were going to do what Jesus had told them to do, to take the message to the ends of the earth. But of course, the ultimate outcome of that was the death, the martyrdom, of Stephen, one of the seven, what we would call now, deacons appointed by the early church to look after widows and orphans. He was preaching, giving a history lesson on how God had worked with his chosen people down through the centuries. And then he spoke about Jesus as being the fulfilment of prophecy, as being the Son of God, the one who was the chosen one, the one who was the Messiah, the Christ, the saviour of the world, who gave his life for us. Well, that was too much for those who listened. And they picked up stones and rocks and they killed him for what they said was blasphemy. And then comes a really interesting verse. I've always found it really reassuring. In chapter 8 and verse 2, it tells us that godly men buried Stephen and mourned deeply for him. You know, sometimes in my life, people have said to me, why are you so sad that a friend or a family member has passed away, has died? You're a Christian. You say you believe. You know that there's something more that's better for them that lies ahead. Ah, yes. But we still mourn. We still miss them. We still grieve. It's still deeply upsetting. But we don't grieve without a hope. And so I point them to this passage and say, well, if those men who were godly could bury Stephen and mourn deeply for him, then it's okay for us to do the same when it comes to those whom we love when they leave this life. But even in that, we need to continue to show courage and faith as those early disciples did. In our world today, there are still many people who follow Jesus and who are persecuted for their faith. I'm thinking of North Korea and China and Pakistan and so many other situations around the globe where people are either imprisoned or beaten simply because they say they believe in Jesus. It takes great courage to stand up for what they believe in in those countries. Perhaps God is calling us through these chapters, five to nine of the Acts of the Apostles that we've read this past week, calling us to courage and compassion as we follow Christ. God bless you as we continue to read of the life of the early church and their faithful service of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord.